This is where you'll find Tony Anderson at 4.30 a.m. six days a week. If I'm not running outside, I'm on the treadmill here. And if the legs aren't feeling right, I'll use the spin bike. And once in a while, I'll use the elliptical just to give my legs a break. Every day, he follows a strict plan. Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, I have a specific purpose. The other the three days is just building base and taking it a little easier, but getting the miles in. And this isn't just a way for him to stay active. So I'm just make a plan, work a plan, check the box, move on, and, and with the ultimate goal of getting ready for that marathon. Crossing that 26.2 mile finish line, not just once, but once in every state. There's a story to everyone. This is what Tony sees as he walks into his office every day as general manager of Cherryland Electric. I love this office. I love coming in here. A room lined with a lifetime of memories and inspiration. The Bay Shore is the only marathon I've done twice. I, that was my first marathon. This is special right here. These two girls are our nieces, and we ran the Quad Cities Marathon together. I ran Hawaii with my son. We were shoulder to shoulder all day that day. Running more than 20,000 miles since 2003, Tony has been on dozens of exhilarating, exhausting adventures, crossing finish lines across the country. But along the way, he's run into his fair share of roadblocks. In 2016, I was gifted a perfect excuse to stop running. In March of 2016, Tony's arthritis led to a total left hip replacement. It was a couple weeks before I could get on the elliptical and then the spin bike. And then 62 days later, after a total hip replacement, I went for my first run. Now he's up to 15 marathons on that new hip. I get it uh, x-rayed every year. It's It looks like the day we installed it. To understand why Tony keeps running despite the obstacles, you have to go back to October 13th, 1963. Five guys in a car, drunk driving accident. One guy doesn't come home. That was my beginning. Tony lost his dad at just 18 months old. My mother used some of the insurance proceeds and bought a 10 by 50 mobile home. So we grew up literally in 500 square feet of space in a little town in South Dakota. Sharing a bunk bed with his brother, his mom and sister shared another. Growing up without a father like I did, you look at your friends with their dads and you wonder what would it have been like if I had a dad to play catch with or go to a ball game with. And I literally, from my earliest memory, thought of my dad every day. Because of male role models like his grandfather and friends' dads who stepped up throughout the years, he realized the critical role mentors have on a child's life, inspiring his initiative, Marathon for Kids, raising money for big brothers, big sisters of Northwestern Michigan through his marathons. I figured out my why. And when you can figure out why, something bad happened to you, that's when you find your peace. So as Tony gets ready to make that 26.2 mile run one last time, crossing the finish line in the last state on his map, he's running for more than just the pain he's endured in his life. Now today, and for many years, I've known why he had to go and why he left and why I'm here and why I'm doing this. He's running to change the ending for hundreds of other kids. In Traverse City, Whitney Amen, 9 and 10 News. October 13th, 1963. A 10 by 50 mobile home. 26.2 miles in every state. A record time of three hours and 47 minutes. These are all significant numbers in Tony Anderson's life, but together, they add up to two life-changing numbers. When he completes his final marathon, he will have raised over a half a million dollars. And that really, what that equates to is about 420 kids that Tony Anderson alone is responsible for. Tony joined the board at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Northwestern Michigan in 2005. Because of his past, he originally didn't want to ask people for money. Instead, he gave his time by mentoring two little brothers over the years. 
I grew up in a single parent home. I, I felt like I knew what these kids need and I felt like that was my contribution to the organization. But his attitude toward fundraising changed in 2009. Running marathons are hard. Asking people for money in, in my mind at that time was hard. So I felt like the two went together. Tony started Marathon for Kids, helping him find his why. Nobody can go back and change their beginning, but anyone can start today and change the ending. And that's what he has done for 420 kids. When an adult cares, listens, and believes in a kid, that's when the endings start to change. That includes John, his little brother since 2012. There's a bunch of things he's taught me. Always work hard, follow your dreams. He helps me like figure out what classes I should take so I could graduate. But as much as Tony has helped John over the years. He's basically family. I've known him for so long and if we, we've talked about so much stuff that's gone down in my life and he's helped me through it. Number one. John has also taught his big brother a thing or two. They help you realize that Life really is the simple things. It's not the big things. It's not the houses we have or the cars we drive. It's just being there for each other. Tony is now training to cross that final finish line in May. If you would have told me when I was growing up that I would run one marathon, it would have been when pigs fly. 50 marathons would have been when pigs fly. So what better way to end this chapter than by running the Flying Pig Marathon in Cincinnati? The first big brother ever was in Cincinnati, Ohio. So it, there's just multiple reasons that it has, the last one has to be Ohio. You may be wondering what's next for the man who's dedicated his life to others. Tony's answer? My standard answer today is less. Less running, more time with his wife, kids, and grandkids. The types of struggles that he's had to go through and the type of life that he's led so that I could be at the point where I'm at, I just, I admire him for it and I'm grateful for him for every day. He is leaving such an amazing legacy to big brothers and big sisters. He will never, ever be forgotten. He will always be part of us. He's a hometown hero. I don't know if this could have happened in any other community besides Traverse City, but fortunately, my life journey led me here. Well, Tony's journey will soon take on another path, it's far from over as he continues to inspire others to make a difference in someone's life. I just want people to remember and never forget that when you change the ending for one kid, you can change the next generation and the generation after that. There's a snowball effect that comes with mentoring a child and changing that ending that people should never forget.